Hey everyone, this is Phil. Welcome to another video. This time we're going to be looking at the Moyu Weilong V9. So this is apparently the ninth version of the Weilong, and uh, as an older speedcuber, I've seen literally every iteration of the Weilong, starting with the Weilong V1, when Moyu really started entering the speedcube market. Now we're on the V9. It's really exciting. So let's check it out and do our first impressions. <laughs> So you got three versions of this cube. This is the standard version. We have the maglev version, and this is the magic clothes version. Uh, the standard one is $18.99. The maglev is $25.99. Magic clothes is a whopping $42.99. So that's a pretty big number, especially for Moyu. One thing that we'll be looking at is, is this cube actually worth $42.99? So we're gonna start with the regular one. I like how the box just shows a cube with a spring. That way anyone can tell that it's the regular one. This is the accessory box. Let's check it out. This is all just very regular Moyu stuff. I'm gonna keep this because this is really handy. And uh, yeah, let's open this guy. So it is actually very, very light. Oh my goodness. 68, that's pretty light. It's in the 60s. You're telling me that if you add a little bit of lube, it might be 69. We have to remember that this is a very bare bones 3x3. It doesn't have any core magnets or anything crazy. So let's do a few turns on this and see how it feels. Yeah. You know what's really interesting? This feels like a Waylong. It has like a very big center skirt right here. This feels like the original Waylong, but modern. I think they nailed it when it came to the cube's character and identity. For a cube that's $19, I can't really say that this is like the best choice for that money because the RS3 Super is still kind of competitive with this. This does feel like a more polished cube, but functionally it's similar. I mean, it's a, it's a stable 3x3 that's magnetic with no crazy features. I honestly want more out of this cube, and I know I'm getting more with the other versions. I have a feeling that in about five minutes, I'm gonna say that I don't believe this cube should exist, but I guess we'll see. So this is the second version. This is the maglev version. I feel like this is going to be the same as the original, but faster. Let's find out. Yeah. Very similar. Uh, the turn is a little cleaner. It is faster. The M slices are, woo, they're crazy. Here, you do M slices. Do you want to do some M slices? Do some M slices. Okay. Yeah, it's really, really fast and actually really easy to do. It's actually really fun on this cube. 71 grams. 71. Yeah, a little heavier because of the additional magnets, but 71 is still quite light. We're in a good place right now. It's just these cubes are super, super similar. This one's $25.99, so there is an $8 price difference. That's pretty steep for a magnet kit that you can buy at the cubicle for how much? It's $4.99. So I guess you're paying for the labor. So these cubes, very, very similar. We'll go on to the next one. We'll see what's up here. So this is the Magic Clothes Edition. I think this is the most interesting one. Okay. The clothes indeed look magical. So this one has a bong core. It has the uh, turquoise internals. So it has repelling magnets in the edges, which is um, something that GAN started with the GAN 13. Yep, see right here. Yeah, so this is what it looks like. It has a very pronounced center skirt. Here's an edge piece and here's a corner piece. Let's open up the, uh, the old Waylong 2021. Okay, yeah, I can see. I can see the one on the left, the V9 design, especially the edge piece is a lot closer to the original Waylongs. Yeah, so this is really cool. The bong core is very polished, much better than the bong core of the RS3 Super. This is like YS3M sort of status on the bong core. It's very solidly built. So the magnet strength on this cube is fairly strong. Like it's actually quite pronounced. And on the lightest compression setting, like, but I'm sure you can compress this. So we actually have a version that's been lubed and compressed a little bit. And it turns much, much better. This is a very, very good cube. So 
Let's do some math, shall we? All right, listen up. Okay, so this is the standard. This is the maglev magic clothes, okay? This is $18.99. This is $25.99. And this is $42.99. So here, there is a difference of $7. The $7 is presumably for the magnet kit, but you can get the magnet kit at $4.99 and you get to keep the springs, right? So I'm not really sure like what the point of this is, like, or what, why it's priced this way. Uh, yeah, big question marks here. Between this one and this one, you have a $17 difference. That gives you the bomb core plus the extra edge magnets and the coating. So the Ballcore YS3M is $25.99 and the UV coated one is $36. So that means $11 of this is the coating. And we know that the Ballcore, like the price difference is around like five or $6, right? And then some amount of money for the edge magnets. So this is just like extrapolating from previous products, which like maybe makes sense or not. So this actually makes sense if you're willing to accept that UV coating costs $11. The Boncore plus $11 is already the price difference. Plus there is some value for the edge magnets that we don't know, but it's either $0 or $1. So you're actually getting something here. So like from my experience as a business person, I don't think these should exist like like just like get rid of this and get rid of that. Uh, I'll tell you why. So I don't think these are competitively viable speed cubes. Like I don't think too many people are going to use them. Uh, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe people will actually go for it, but I, I just don't think like without the features, they are actually competitive with a lot of the other cubes with core magnets. So what this does is one thing is it, it confuses consumers because there are so many variants, like the YS3M had four variants. So we have literally 10 Moyu cubes in the last six months. What, what this is actually doing is it's making this look expensive, right? When you compare this, and that you're like, holy cow, there's a $17 price difference. Only then when after we break it down, we're like, okay, this is like kind of reasonable. It just draws attention to the fact that this is so much more expensive. I think this cube is really good. You know, if I had it my way, I would just make this cube and drop the price a little bit because I'm sure you can save money by not producing separate products for these three, simplify the product make something a little cheaper. Yeah, after like doing this math and like looking at it, this price kind of makes sense if you accept that the ball, the, the coating is $11 and you accept that these prices make sense. Uh, I just don't think these should be products. Yeah, it's just my, my opinion as a, uh, as some guy at the cubicle, you know. Let's weigh this thing. Yeah, let's, let's see. 77, yeah, still a very fair weight. So I'll just turn on the timer, do some solves. After doing a few solves on it, it's really smooth and it's really easy to use. Like, I feel like I don't need to put that much effort into turning. Yeah, the turning feels quite good. I'm very impressed. Uh oh, I think that last layer was just like two soons, but I'm bad and I did a Z perm. I corner twisted. Okay, the corner twist threw me off. Yeah, we have there we go. Yeah. I twisted it again. So I corner twisted twice in that solve. All right, I'm gonna compress this cube. Oh, the center caps are so easy to take off. Yeah, there. Oh, okay, okay. Wait, it's kind of good. All right, I got this. So 
So I generally like this cube a lot. It performs well and it's very light and really fun to solve on. I'm just a little nervous about the corner twisting thing that seems to happen when the cube is not very compressed. And yeah, just from a product design perspective, having a few of the settings not very usable seems a little bit risky and not attractive and I think it could discourage people if they keep corner twisting and they don't know to adjust the cube or whatnot. I did hear from many people, including someone who works at Moyu, that you can put springs in this cube to make the feel better, but I think at that point, Moyu just needs to decide what its philosophy is releasing the cube. If so many people, including their own employees, are saying put springs in it, maybe they should just release this with springs. Like, not the cube does not have to have maglev. Like, I think that might make more sense. Like, you can have a bone core plus all the other features and just choose not to use maglev. I feel like they did that to make the cube seem as marketable as possible, but maybe not as functional as possible. And honestly, if they put springs in, maybe it would reduce the price by six bucks or seven bucks or whatnot and they would make even more money, who knows? I know this is gonna be a pretty commonly discussed question, like which version should you get? Because Moyu's giving us choices, right? I honestly think you should just go for this one. Whenever someone shops for a flagship cube, they're usually sending the signals, I want the best cube possible to give myself the best possible times. The price is like maybe important, but it's not the most important thing. The priority is the best cube. This is the best cube in the uh, lineup here. You know, if you are thinking about these cubes, they're not as expensive, so it's not like you're going to be destroying your bank account buying these, but if you're buying a cube with just magnets and maybe a little maglev, just remember that you have a lot of choices. You know, there's a lot of Moyu's own cubes that satisfy that criteria. So yeah, uh, I'm not in a rush to get these. I'm really excited about this and uh, hopefully you guys are too. Thanks for watching.